what I was saying, I, see, I'm ready to go. Okay, what I was saying when you couldn't hear me, I had prayed, played a song, I was moving. Okay, so, all right, so here we are. All right, and wow, I'm going to refocus, I'm going to regroup. So, what I was saying is that we're living in trying times. Okay, and I was saying that in these trying times, you will find yourself okay, having to do things that you don't want to do. Like, for example, oh, you want to hear the song, Denise? Like, wait, wait, what song? What song? All right, Denise. All right. Let me finish my sentence, okay? Um, and I'll put it down there for you. I'll put the link to it. It's a really good one. Denise knows when I've come up with the songs, they're good ones, all right? So anyway, what I was saying was this. Um, we're living in trying times, and what that means for you is that you are going to have to obey when you don't feel like it. Now, I've been doing this for many, 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 many years. But if you're going to see the new money, if you're going to see your prosperity, if you're going to step into your wealthy place, if you're going to step into your inheritance, you're going to have to start doing things that you don't want to do. And now, while that might sound so simple, just because it's simple doesn't mean it's easy. Okay. Just because it's simple, it doesn't mean it's easy because glory will inconvenience you. Glory will wreck your schedule. Glory will wreck your program and everything else. Okay. Anything that's fleshy. So with that being said, um, I didn't feel like getting on here today. I really didn't. I was minding my own business. I was enjoying my time. I've said this before. I am not about that event driven glory you know, where you got to go to a service to get in glory, you get all that. No, I get more many times just sitting in my prayer chair, receiving from him than I do going to different things. All right. So with all that being said, oh, great. Thank you, Denise. I appreciate that. With all that being said, here's what we want to talk about today. The queen is dead. Your money isn't. All right. So if you're going to see the increase many months ago, like maybe back in March, Father had given me a prophetic word. You can check it out on our YouTube channel. That word was titled that he was releasing the first wave of wealth. Okay. And he gave me specific criteria for people. And if you've been following us for any period of time, you know that everything we do builds one upon the other. All right. So this is kind of one of those prophetic building streams. All right. Which is why I don't need to be on here every day. Okay. Because what he does unfolds over time, all right? And when he does release me to come on, it's something potent, it's something powerful, it's not uh, to, uh, your everyday normal Facebook fair, YouTube fair, social media fair, okay? It's rare, it's rare. And so with all that being said, you can track with us, that's why I'm bringing that up, you can track with us by going back through looking at the last couple of messages. If you're on YouTube, you know that the last message that we shared with you had to do with, and I want to pull it up myself, it had to do with, I'm going back a couple of months, all right? It had to do with closing demonic doors, opening up new doors of opportunity, right? So again, we're still building that prophetic stream. And this is all about the new. Then you know that about a month or so ago, we did a short and um, right around my birthday time, right, a couple months ago, he starts speaking about how we were entering into our season of blessings and rewards, right? And then he released a book. Have you been decreeing for your season of blessings and rewards? Because again, as I stated at the top of this, it's about your obedience, okay? That's how you're going to see what it is that he has for you is through your obedience. So we've been decreeing all right, for our new season of blessings and rewards. And if you want to pick that up um, and you don't have it, I will pop the link down there for you. Okay, I'll pop the link down there for you. It's literally blessings and rewards, bit.ly blessings and rewards. I'm going to copy it, okay? I'm going to copy it, paste it right there for you. Okay, you see that down there, bit.ly, blessings and rewards. Yeah, bit.ly, blessings and rewards. Uh-huh, 
Yep, and glory is simple is not necessarily easy. That's right. That's right. So it's bit.ly blessings and rewards, okay? Uh, and you can start decreeing into your season of blessings and rewards. Now, I'm not going to give the whole thing away right here, but what I will say, again, if you've been tracking with us, then you know that rewards are financial, okay? There are many things, but in this season, he's talking about financial rewards, which again, is continually pulling into the stream, bringing us to where we are now, which is the queen is dead, your money isn't, okay? And so, wow. Yep. So that's where we are. Okay. So Ove Alavasi. So with that being said, I don't know if you know this, but Queen Elizabeth um, is being purported as dying, right? And all throughout the media, they've been celebrating. Oh, I shouldn't say celebrating, but you know, they've been going through the funeral and laying her in state and the monarch has been passing on, right? And um, there's a prophetic significance there if you have been following, okay? And I'm just gonna peek at my notes. There's a prophetic significance there, okay? The new monarch is... Charles the third, the new monarch is Charles the third. All right. And so even though the queen is dead, he's inheriting a boatload of money, a boatload of money. Specifically, he is going to inherit around $28 billion in assets, according to the New York Times. Now, if you know anything about inheritances, blessings, if you know anything about inheritances, you also know this. You know that when you receive an inheritance, there's a tax on it, right? You get taxed to receive that inheritance. Well, guess what? The British government is not taxing the new monarch. Wow. While everybody else in the UK, if they receive an inheritance, 40% of whatever they receive, okay, is taxed. And so if you look at that, wow, that tells you a couple of things. The first thing it tells you is this, when you are royalty, different things apply to you that don't apply to everybody else. Now, glory is all about splendor, majesty, opulence, wealth, Right. And so there's a lot going on, but it doesn't mean it applies to you. OK, it doesn't mean it applies to you. And that's why you got to keep your veatila. You got to keep your ear to him so that you're not taking in everything that's being said. There's a lot uh, to you uh, being set up. There's a lot of voices, a lot of movement, a lot of live videos, a lot, a lot, a lot of news, a lot of stuff. OK. But when you are royalty, it doesn't apply to you. So again, the queen is dead. Your money isn't. Now, not only is his wealth estimated at about $28 billion, but he received opulent housing as a result of her death. Shopping malls he inherited. Wind farms that other people are going to manage. Come on. Don't this sound like Deuteronomy 6? Right? I'll live in houses full of goodly things. Right? I will receive oil that I did not labor for. This is going back to the king's decree. Are you tracking with us? Are you tracking with us, right? And then he also is receiving some private fortune. Now, the other thing that is very important for you to know is that if you've been decreeing with us since 2017 in the vein of money, wealth, kingdom wealth, then you know that money is nothing but paper with printed value on it. Now, I've been saying that since 2017, and I want to tie that in to what's going on right now with Queen Elizabeth, okay? <clears throat> Did you know that when a monarch dies, okay, anyone that's on the throne, the whole money changes? S specifically, her face was on the dollar. Queen Elizabeth's face was on the dollar. But now that she's dead, the new monarch, King William, the, excuse me, he doesn't want to be called William. He chose not to do that. I want to get his name right. 
Charles the third. He didn't want to take his grandfathers because they do that in tradition, by the way, they changed their name. And I was reading on that. I thought that was interesting. So he didn't want, he wanted to stick with Charles King. Charles the third is now, okay. His face is going to be on the money. All right. It's going to be on the money. Now here's the thing that's very, very interesting about this. Money can be reprinted with any value. And that's why you shouldn't be all up in a tizzy about what's going on with you financially. Because if you see it for what it is, yes, it's a tool. Yes, Ecclesiastes tells us that money answers all things. Yes, we need it in this earth realm. But you also have to understand that in this earth realm that we live in, the people that control the money can change the value. Are, are you seeing that? Are you seeing that? That's why her face is no longer on the money and his face is. The queen is dead, but your money isn't. Okay? So all money is, is a form of creation. Okay? God created it. We get to steward it, whether you're ungodly or godly. Okay? It's a creation. Okay? And so what he wants us to do in these times is to ascend beyond, okay, and take control just like they made a decision, my God, to change the face of their money, we can make a decision to change the face of our money. We can make a decision as believers with authority in Christ Jesus. We can make a decision to change what is the face value of our accounts, okay? Are you seeing this? It can be reprinted. It can be reminted, okay, in the natural, all right? <clears throat> so Queen Elizabeth reigned for the longest in the UK's history, okay? And I've told you that when a sovereign ruler rises to the throne, his or her face no longer remains on the money of that nation. Wow. And so some countries are going to discontinue the printing of the money with Queen Elizabeth's face on it, right? Because that's their country's tradition. But then there are some other countries that are going to immediately adopt the face of the new monarch and start using that money. But since it will not be reprinted, right, it's just going to phase on out. When it's done, it's done. When it's gone, it's gone, right? And so once it runs out, they're not printing anymore. Instead, they're going to start with new money. They're starting with new money. They're starting with new money, which is the imprint of the newly minted King Charles III. Okay, now I'm not sure if you've been tracking with the news. I'm not sure how much you pay attention to what's been going on, but many professing Christians miss the revelation that we have uh, to, yeah that we're about to unload right now, unpack right now, as it is in the natural, so it is in the spirit, okay? If the world is receiving new money, how much more so you, I, us, how much more so, okay? So this is not about memorializing the death, okay, of a queen as many in the world do. Okay, this is about releasing a prophetic announcement that your heavenly father is releasing new money to his children. Okay, come on, shout right now. I receive your new money, father. I receive your validea, your new money, father. And you know, one of the things that the world does so well that he doesn't want us to do is they memorialize death. Have you noticed that? Ma Tula, they memorialize death. Everything that dies, they create a memorial of it. Okay? Look at 9 11 that just passed. Some people are still, wow, remembering death. Why are we memorializing death? That's right. That's right, Denise. I receive your new money, Father. Okay? We're not doing that. We're not doing that, okay? 
And there is a demonic agenda behind that. I'm not going to get into that. Right. Alleluia suvete right now, but there is. Okay. So I went into all that so that you can see that if you're paying attention to what's taking place in this natural realm, even if you're not hearing, wow, anything in your prayer closet, you're asking, like the scripture says, you're seeking, you're knocking, and maybe you're not hearing as keenly as you used to. The earth is not just groaning, but it's speaking. The things that are going on in the earth are speaking. The deaths, the weather, all the rain, the heat. Can you prophetically perceive what's taking place? Okay. So I pray now that your spiritual senses are open. I tell a day, every deaf and dumb spirit, hear my voice now. We will not worship in this temple, the temple of the most high God who has what? All knowledge, all seeing, all eyes. He's the all hearing one. We command your eyes and your ears to be open now in Jesus' name. My televea to what's going on in the spirit, which we can see as a result of what's happening in the natural. No, the natural is not taking place first. Go to 1 Corinthians 2.14 for that, right? What you see in the earth or in the natural is a result of what's taking place in the spirit, okay? It's a to of it's like a rippling effect. You know how dominoes work? You tap one and they're all on the line and then they all fall down, right? Same thing with what's taking place in the spirit. The domino is in the spirit uh, to, to father orchestrate something. And then guess what? Everything in the natural is a result of that. Okay. And so what you're seeing is dominoes falling. What you're seeing is dominoes falling. Okay. So we command you to see what father desires for you to see, to hear what he desires for you to hear. We command your spiritual senses to function as a worshiper of the most high God versus as one who worships dumb idols. Because when you are constantly vitale, two years have gone by. And people are still talking about who died and what died and what happened in 2001. My God was when 9 11 happened. Stop worshiping dumb idols. Cause what they have eyes, ears, but they can't hear. They can't see. They can't speak. We don't worship or memorialize death. Okay. We don't do that. So he wants you to take your rightful place. Okay. The King took his rightful place. And when he did, he inherited a boatload. So perhaps what's going on, my lady, with you financially is that you haven't received your inheritance. Okay? You haven't received it. You haven't embraced it. Mm. If you go back to the Old Covenant, and you look at the children of Israel, right? And how you can be in your promised land, but yet not receiving. And that's why I said for us to say, I receive your new money, Father, right? You have to be careful because you can struggle for so long. Wow. That something new can be going on in your life and you not perceive it. You not embrace it. And you can't always look to the natural for what's happening. When father declared over us that this was our season of blessings and rewards, I was obedient, but in the natural, it was like, okay, okay, right? But as I continued to decree, according to the blessings and rewards, right, book, then it was like I started to see. So sometimes your senses have to be calibrated, which is why I was praying for them a few minutes ago to really see what's going on, okay? And then you got to stand in faith and believe that if he said it, 
that it is what it is, no matter what you're seeing in the natural. And, and these are times when you really got to press. You really have to press into what he is saying. I'm telling you, it's an all out assault. Yes. Matuya of wickedness against anyone who wants to receive their inheritance. All the stops by the enemy have been pulled out. So you have got to pull out all your stops too. Okay, you got to. You can't leave any stone on uh, Matuya unturned. You got to comb over those things. Yesterday, one of the things he said to me. <laughs> was from Deuteronomy 4, and I posted it today. Deuteronomy 6, excuse me, 12. And he was saying, don't forget me and don't complain. Okay, Deuteronomy 6 and 12 says, be careful not to forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt and out of the place of slavery. See, we are in our promised land. We are. We are, but sometimes you're not turning those stones over. Revisit your first works. What did he tell you to do? Did he tell you to fast and pray every week? Do it. Did he tell you to decree every day? Do it. Did he tell you to create something? Create it. All right, whatever it is that he told you to do, I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what you feel like. You have to do what he's telling you to do because that's how you are pressing into the new money, because your money isn't dead. Queen Elizabeth is. The queen is dead. Your money isn't dead. Okay. But I want to say this. If you're doing things in your flesh, then you are doing dead works. Okay. You're doing dead works. And we now have a king on the throne and not a queen. Sila. Sila. And yesterday, a movie was released at the theater and it's called The Woman King, right? I'm not sure if you saw it. What, what, what is this saying, Taya? What is this saying to us as believers? We are kings and priests, mm -hmm. but have you received it? Not only have you received it, not only have you embraced it, what actions are you taking, my God? Because the king, the new monarch, Charles III, he couldn't just sit back, my God, Malataya. He, there were some things that need to be in place so that he could ascend onto the what? Throne. Mm. Here's what I'm saying to you, state it differently. You have to master your mountain. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying, and that's what I heard. Okay, July the 4th, 2022, I was waking up. He said, master your mountain. Now we've been, again, I've told you, we've been pressing into this since 2017. All right. And I was, I've been focusing on increase, focusing on breaking the cycles of lack, focusing on laying hold of our financial inheritance, receiving it. Right. I was like, okay, that's great. Now, how do I master my mountain? And on August the 1st, first, he showed me how, all right. As I was turning over turning over, okay, every stone, being diligent to do the things he told me to do. He released this scripture. This is Luke 13, 67 in the Amplified, and it reads, and he told them this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it, but, uh, tell I did, but did not find any. So he said to the vine dresser, see here, for these three years, I have come, my God, looking for fruit on this fig tree, and I find none. Cut it down. Why should it continue also to use up the ground? Why should this fig tree deplete the soil? Why should this fig tree, intercept the sun, soak up all the sun, take up all that tala, all this room in my kingdom. Why are the people, the leaders, taking up the room? Wow. 
using up and depleting all the good kingdom soil, intercepting, soaking in the sun, blocking the sun, my God, S-O-N. You know what the scripture says, that there are some, what do they do? They're twice the son of Satan because they shut up the kingdom of God. They don't want to go in. They don't want you to go in either. Taking up room, intercepting the sun, not to a sun, in the way, but not in a good way. Okay. So, so Jesus cursed the fig tree. And remember, if you've been decreeing, we've been saying that he will bless those who bless us and curse those who curse us. And we're not talking about people. There's so much more than people. If you go back again and you've been tracking with us back to that same video that I mentioned at the top of this, closing demonic doors, opening up new doors of opportunity. In that video, we thought we were releasing a wealth program and he switched it up and he start doing something with the number 120. 120. My God. And um, you were on here, Eva. You sold, another person sold, and you all didn't re realize this. The amount of money that y'all sold came out to be 120 and some change. Then he had me go the next day and replay it. And it was 120 and some minutes that I was actually on. And in that video, he was ministering to you about how if you are solely focused on ministering to people, that you are ministering at the lowest level possible. Now, I know that might come off like to some people, God so loved the world that he had to that he gave his only begotten son. Jesus died for people. Jesus died for you to be glorified. That's why Jesus died. He died to redeem your soul. Okay? So people, your mind, your will, and your emotions, he died so that those can be redeemed. Okay? So. In that vein, right after that, he gave me an assignment, a prayer assignment to be specific. And um, it's in line with this fig tree. I haven't forgotten the scripture. It's in line with that. Okay. See, when you're a king and you've received your inheritance, then what you start to do is start partnering with God to see what the earth needs. What? Does the earth need from you right now, Elijah, Tala? What does the earth need from you right now, Maura? What does the earth need? So it's a prayer assignment that you take on in partnership with God as that king, okay? And it may or may not have anything to do with people. If it has to do with people, it just means that the way he is honoring you is a little lower than the people that he's like, come on, let, uh, let day, let's make it rain. And I'm not talking about spiritual rain. I'm talking, I tell you, I'm talking about if you live in a dry place. And it needs some rain. I'm talking about opening up your mouth and commanding a cloud to form like the size of a hand and release some rain. And then when you, and and how much I need a cloud to form now and then to lie and to release 30 minutes of rain. And then I need the cloud to dissipate, the hand to be removed the rain to stop after 30 minutes. This is what Elijah did. Are you not a person of like manner? Matoya that can pray and align in the earth what's out of alignment? Can you purify the waters in your city, country, state? Can 
you get into that kingdom and deal with the spirits that are doing what? Taking up the room that your wealth should be taken up. My tate. How can you get in there and reverse the spirits of perversion and witchcraft and rebellion that are trying to stop the flow of money getting to you? We say things like, I want multiple streams and then Batusa of wealth. Where do you think that came from? That's what the world says. But the truth is this. Here's the truth. The wealth streams are flowing from heaven to you and then through you. That's why we are blessed to be a blessing. So the world got that from God, okay? So those multiple streams, the river Atoya in heaven that flows from the throne straight to you, Etala, inside your silver cord, Elatuya. That's a stream, that's a flow. It's going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. If it's been purified, is your stream purified? And sometimes it has to do with, again, where you're living. Why do you, where you're living geographically, why do you think there's all this warfare about the good states or the righteous states or the sheep states and the goat states. Why do you think there's all this upheaval about the states that will ban abortion outrightly or the states that won't? Why do you think for the past two years there's been all of this turning over major decisions that government used to make to the state level? So what's been flowing into your state from these demonic streams? Okay? Clean it up. Then the new money that is not dead will start flowing to you. See, these are the things that kings, these are the things that kings do. These are the things that kings do. They're not sitting around uh, ta, talking about so we having a four day Kojic revival at ABC Church. No, they're not talking about oh, Shabba, whose face is on a flyer down your timeline on Facebook or any other social media platform. No, because uh, they got stuff to do in the spirit. Now, I know I hear some of you saying, this is too deep. We don't have to go that deep. We don't have to go that, we don't have to go that deep. Or you're too deep. How deep is deep enough? Let me ask you. Matuya, how deep is deep enough? If you're still floundering in your business, you're still floundering trying to figure out what your purpose, your call is, what God wants from you in these times, what you're supposed to be doing, whether you're coming, going. How deep is deep enough? And sometimes we think we are deep enough. My God. Because people keep telling us we're so deep. <laughs> See that? Well, I want to let you know that maybe you haven't gone far enough. Maybe that's what the problem is. Maybe that's what the problem is. Well, I worship and praise. You know, I've been praying for six hours. Not enough. Or some people think it's enough. 
I've been fasting for 40 days. This will suffice. That's more than enough. I've been locked up in my home since the pandemic and I've been reading my Bible all day. It's enough. Well, here's what we've learned. Demons and unclean spirits, they don't want to launch out into the deep. Did you know that? They don't. And we can see this with a lot of people who profess Christ. They only go so far, my God. Then they plateau in the spirit. They never go beyond a certain point in their spiritual walk with God. It's like there's a lid over, say, or a container over them and on them. And this container is demonic because demons are the one who do not want to give up any territory in you, in your business, in your ministry, in your state. They're fighting over territory. Ah, ta, ta. However, all that matters, it doesn't matter what they want. It matters that Jesus wants you to go into the deep. He commands you to do so. In fact, in Luke 8, 31. My God, kings, the queen is dead. The kings are being seated. The ones who've received their inheritance, they're ascending to the monarchy. They're ascending to the throne. So just like Jesus, you can take authority over natural things. Remember, I said that money is creation. It's something that was created. And you need to take authority over these natural things so that you can be fruitful. That was the problem. That's what Jesus illustrated going back to that fig tree. He illustrated for us, listen, I am taking authority over this thing, my God, that I created to do something at a certain time. So if Jesus could summon a donkey from the city and curse a fig tree, so can we. And we can do it with money. We can do it with our own financial sitalavus. Master your mountain. Master your mountain. Elijah, master that mountain of debt. Master what it is that you desire. What do I mean by that? Recently, if you're on our mailing list, you know, God challenged me to sit down and map out how much it would cost us to do the five glory tours in every state that we're called to all at the same time. Okay, that came out to 2.5 million. That's a mountain. Okay, but it's not, oh, God, but it's not a mountain that we cannot master in prayer. It's not because we can speak to the mountain. We can call in. And we are calling in the 2.5 million in prayer. So no, you haven't gone deep enough. You haven't gone deep enough. My God, Father, we command every unclean spirit of lack, poverty, limitation, bondage in your life, in your business, in your ministry to go to Orcas. That uh, go to the deep gulf. We pray in Jesus' name. That's how deep you need to go. If you don't know what Orcus is, you're not deep enough. See? See? It's sometimes not to ya. We're not deep enough. Yep. The deep gulf is where you have to go. Yep. 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 <sighs> It's the place where the spirits don't want to give up territory. That's how deep you got to go. 
Okay? That's how deep you got to go. That's how deep. So new money awaits. The queen is dead. New money awaits. And Father is calling the Elijahs and the Mauras into a 120 prayer dimension. Okay, that's what's going on right now. Now, let me say this. This is not the prayer dimension that we saw over the past two years where people press and play, going live, praying on Facebook. That's not the one. Okay, that's not the one. Okay, this dimension is gonna require the development of sharp spiritual senses. Okay, because 120, I never told you what it meant and I am not led to because there are certain things you need to compute in the spirit. Ask Daniel. Ask Elijah. Ask Ezekiel. There are things that need to be computed so that you can see deeper. That's why no one can know who is the Antichrist. That's why no one's been able to figure out the number 666. And he said, compute it, my God. If you're wise enough, compute. But many of us don't have the eyes, uh, to, uh, the ears, the spiritual capacity, the kingship to do so. Yep, yep. And this is more than just following Holy Spirit in prayer, according to Romans 8, okay? This is about being led into dominion over all creation, and that includes money, because I already told you money is creation. So we've given you some tips. Do you have anything you want to say? He's just enjoying this, you all. I am, um, just so you'll know, I am flowing, but I'm also teaching from a prayer handbook. Okay. You don't have anything. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm teaching from a prayer handbook. All right. If you want to answer this call, we will show you. Okay. Okay. What the Godhead of glory has been showing us about the financial plan for your life, your business and your ministry. Okay. Let me um, just go check that out real quick. Okay. I want to give you the opportunity to join us. Okay, there it is right there, bit.ly, pray for my biz. Okay, because this is not just about having a business. Financial stuff is your business. That's why your mama used to say, go take care of your business or go handle your business, right? And a lot of times when they said that, they were talking about your finances, right? Or whatever it was that need to be attended to. We are looking for people that want to come into that place. We're calling the Elijahs and the Mauras who don't even know what that means, don't even know what that identity is about. That's a part of this. We'll teach you what that identity is about and show you how to govern, all right? Show you how to let the, the king of glory reign in your business, entrepreneur, okay? So this is what we wanted to come on today. Please share this, okay? Whether you actually meet us inside of this prayer station or not, okay? Content's already there waiting for you. We will pray every week, okay? Every Friday, we're gonna be praying together because you can pray alone, but it's something about praying with apostolic company that has mastered and is still learning to master their mountain in certain ways, right? Beyond what you can do by yourself. And that's part of the problem with, with many folks. They think they know everything. Again, they think they're deep enough. Mm -hmm. They think they can do it by themselves, but yet they're still struggling. Wow, but their bank accounts are still empty. But they still are not walking in their purpose that God has for them. They still haven't been able to uh, la, do ya, launch out into the deep and do nothing. They still have not been able to take authority over the smallest thing. That fig tree was a small thing for Jesus. Mm -hmm. hmm. So if you want to see it rain in the natural 
and understand the correlation between the ability to make it rain in the natural and make it rain in your accounts, then this is for you. When you go out to that link, we have another 14 minute video or so that will explain who this is right for. Okay. Share this please with somebody because again, whether they join or not, the word, the queen is dead. Your money isn't, is good enough. All right. We um, only want who God wants to be in there. Um, we've prayed in this vein in here. So prayerfully, I saw some of the comments and feedback that this is good. Thank you very much. I saw some people saying um, that they receive your new money. So share with somebody that needs to do the things that you've been doing while you're on here. Okay. We thank you for joining us today. And as we always say, we will be back on when, when he leads us. Okay. Because we're building in the spirit. Okay. These messages are building. They're not just one offers, you know, we're shooting a message here and shooting a message there. Okay. He is taking us someplace. Yes. And we're traveling with him and we invite you, Elijah and Maura. Yes. If you want to step into your kingship, if you want to ascend to the throne, you ready? You ready to take your rightful place? You ready to get your inheritance? Listen, are you ready for your priceless inheritance? Because King Charles, we know, according to the New York Times, he's inheriting 28 billion, but we have treasures in the deep that supersede any man-made figure that we can put on it. Yes. All right. So you have everything that you need. We will be back on the next time he leads us. Stay tuned to our mailing list. Thank you for joining us. Go deep. Okay. Master your mountain. Receive your inheritance. Step into your kingship. All right. Let me see if there's a comment or questions. Okay. Blessings to you all too. We'll see you real soon.